grace, mercy, and peace be with you all from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Warm greetings to you all as we navigate life with coronavirus. We miss being together physically with all of you, and we are so grateful that we can be together electronically to worship our good and gracious God. Our lengthy gospel reading today from John 11 is an account of friendship and faith, of loss and grief, of disappointment and a new life, and finally, of community. It encouraged me as I spent time with it this week, and I hope it will encourage you as well. It begins with Lazarus being sick. His sisters Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Our Lord is close to this family, and they must have had high hopes and expectations that he would come immediately and bring healing as he had done for so many others. Yet day after day passed, and we can well imagine the sisters' grief and confusion when their brother died. When Jesus finally arrived, Martha said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Were they words of faith or words of accusation? Many of us have experienced this sense of confusion and disappointment, this crisis of faith. Lord, I called for you. Where were you? We know what it is after a prayer has gone unanswered to think that our Lord did not come through in the way we wanted or needed. The conversation between Martha and Jesus continued as he said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And then Jesus said this remarkable and dangerous thing to her, the kind of thing which made the authorities angry and sent him a step closer to the cross. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? And she said, yes. Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. She believed in him, even though her brother was wrapped in grave cloths in a tomb. Through heartbreak and disappointment, she believed. In those shattering times when our good and loving prayers are not answered with yes or right now, in times that are overwhelming and filled with uncertainty, I pray that we too will stand with Martha and trust and believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, that his eyes see farther than ours do, that he is working even now through healthcare workers and medical researchers and each of us, that there is a bigger picture that is in God's hands and those hands can be trusted even in these times of global pandemic. Let's look at six details in the final verses of this reading where I think we find more guidance and encouragement for these unprecedented times. We have a tomb, a stone, wrapped hands, feet, and face, and two commands. After Jesus spoke with Martha and then Mary, he wept and shared the sorrow of all those who were gathered. And then John writes, Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and there was a stone lying against it. Let's think about the tomb for a moment. As our world is experiencing loss of health and loss of life from this virus, we may be in a tomb of grief. We grieve the way the world has changed and will change. We miss normal life and special events. We have fears about loss of livelihood, and we miss our connections with other people. 
we are grieving, and we might very well cry out with the psalmist, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said, take away the stone. There was a stone in front of Lazarus's tomb, and that points to the reality that it is sometimes very hard to get out of the tombs in which we find ourselves. But notice now something important. Jesus told the crowd to take away the stone. Sometimes when we are stuck in the darkness, it's very hard to get ourselves out of it. Is God calling you to ask for some help today? Or is God calling you to take away the stone in front of someone else's tomb? To create an opening for someone who has the blues? To remove an obstacle? To offer some encouragement? And then notice the description of this miracle, of Lazarus coming out of the tomb. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Have you felt as though your hands are bound? This is a time of social distancing when we cannot reach out and touch someone physically as we want to. We're learning how to reach out in different ways to express love and compassion and kindness. A lovely example of creative reaching out comes from the parents of a staff member. They are in their 80s and they are living in different areas of a care center. He is in the nursing home area and she is in independent living. And now because of the virus, they are not able to visit one another. It was recently their 64th wedding anniversary. What to do, how to celebrate. They normally would have gone out to dinner and our staff member said they didn't really have a tradition of giving each other cards and gifts. Well, this year they got creative. The wife got her husband some treats and maybe for the first time, a mushy card. And she asked a staff member to deliver them to him. He, who was not a crafty kind of person and, and who had never held a glue gun in his life, with the loving help of caregivers, made a gift for her to hang in her window. It was very sweet and romantic, and they were both delighted. It's time to creatively reach out to one another, and this couple did it beautifully. A few more details from the Gospel. John tells us that Lazarus's feet were also bound. Now that so many of us are sheltering in place in our homes, our mobility is certainly challenged. And of course, the other previous difficult situations of life have not gone away with the arrival of the virus. And some of us and our dear ones are having a very hard time moving forward. We need to soak one another in prayer. John tells us Lazarus's face was also wrapped. And we might immediately think of those who wear face masks to care for others, and those who are manufacturing them, and those who are sewing them. And we pray for those places where there are shortages of masks and other supplies. And in another sense, a wrapped face may point toward those who are in an inward kind of darkness, who cannot see the light, who cannot at this moment look at the world with hope or see possibility or see what God is doing in their lives. And so after the stone was rolled away and Lazarus came out of the tomb, face and hands and feet bound, Jesus said to those who were watching, unbind him and let him go. He did not tell Lazarus to unwrap himself. He told those around him, to unwrap those grave clothes. He's calling us to do the same because we cannot do this alone. We need to help and support one another in these peculiar times, however we are able to do so. For instance, some of you when you are getting groceries are also dropping some off for your neighbors. You are supporting local businesses and restaurants as they adapt to the times. Teachers are offering to support parents with ideas for teaching their children at home. 
you are keeping one another in earnest and loving prayer. Children in our church are sending drawings and good wishes to people in our church they don't even know. One avenue of support for me is staying in touch with people on Facebook. In these serious times, people have posted some poignant observations to give their friends a little relief. A few of my favorites so far. Introverts, put down your book and call your extrovert friends. They are not okay. And this one. Thoughts and prayers go out to all the married men who've spent years telling the wife, I'll do that when I have time. <laughs> and there's a lovely lady sitting next to me on the couch. I guess we're married. She seems very nice. And Noah only took two of everything on the ark. Try to keep that in mind when you go shopping. <laughs> and finally, I didn't expect to give up this much for Lent. This account of the raising of Lazarus shows us that our Lord can bring life out of the most unlikely tomb-like situations. The voice that called Lazarus out of the tomb is calling us today, too, from death to life calling us to roll away stones and unwrap the bound places and help each other move forward with hope and kindness. In other words, our Lord is calling us to be faithful Christian community for the sake of one another. Holy Week begins one week from today. It will be different this year as we are together through live stream instead of in person. But the message of divine love that is Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter will be just as true as always. And the final word, even now, will once again be life. Stay safe. Keep the faith. In the name of Jesus.